So I'm about to put in the French door and the two side lights into the master bedroom here. And usually for a windowed install like this, if you go to a Cass Road Show, you'll see that it's really simple. You just prep the sill with a can strip, you put your sill pan in, you put a bead of caulking on the back of it, a bead of sealant, sealant on the back of it, and you set your unit. But life is never as easy as it is at a Cats Road Show. Because at a Cats Road Show, it's just a set. And a lot of new construction jobs are almost like that too, where everything's fairly level and straightforward, and, and you don't have to deal with the kinds of problems that we run into frequently on a remodel. And this is a classic remodel. I've got several situations here that are combined to make this a real touchy, kind of tricky install on the windows and the doors. I'm going to put a deck outside here eventually, hopefully soon, and to do that I need a ledger on this wall. The only backing though for that ledger is right up here. The floor on this addition was framed with 4x4s. They only come down that far. And I'm going to have to attach the ledger into there, but I want the ledger to step down. I mean, I want the deck to step down at least two or three inches before the deck boards so that the water doesn't come back up inside this opening when it rains. I mean, this is Oregon. It's going to rain real hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ledger. I'm going to attach this ledger up high, way up here where the backing is, even though I'm going to put the joist on down here. The difficult part with this installation is realizing that the windows and doors have to go in and be waterproof. This sill pan has to waterproof this opening, but it also has to simultaneously waterproof the ledger as well. So I've got several things going on here that I'm going to do at the same time. I'm going to put this sill pan in here, but before I do, I'm going to make sure that I get this window opening all the way across, all three openings, I get the opening level because if I can get this opening level all the way across to start with, the windows will install a lot easier and the ledger will install a lot easier along with the windows. So the first thing I'm gonna do is shoot this in with a laser. I could take a long level. I mean, I got a couple of long stabile vial levels, bubble vial levels back there, but I can't get them inside the opening. Not the way I can this laser level. This is the Stabila LAX 200. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna set it down and this is going to allow me to read right inside of each opening with a tape measure. You can see the red line right on the zip wall here. Yeah, I've installed zip wall on the, on the exterior of the remodel right here. It's a great product. I'll talk about this a little bit more in a few minutes. But I want to measure to this laser line now. All I have to do now is take the tape measure, put it down against the sill here, against the sheathing, and read where that laser line is. And look, it's at 15 and 5 eighths. So let's check the rest of this opening and see how far out it is. Okay, so over here, I got 15 and a strong 5 eighths. So that's pretty close. This opening right here is pretty level. What do we got right here? 15 and almost 3 quarters. So we're kind of falling here. We're falling because the number is bigger. It's right at 15 and 3 quarters here. So the number's bigger, so the floor is falling. Look over here. 15 and 7 eighths. 15 and 7 eighths on. So we've dropped another eighth of an inch over here. And let's go all the way over to this end right here. Oh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, oh, there's the laser line. I was just standing in the way of it. Here's the laser line right here. 15 and 7 eighths again. So we definitely need to pad the sill right through here about a quarter of an inch to lift this end up so that it's level with this area right here which is just shy of 15 and 3 quarters. Just under, it's actually 15 and 5 eighths. That's what we read here before. So we want to put a quarter of an inch down on that side and probably an eighth of an inch or so across here. I've got some shims that I've cut out of quarter inch plywood so we can set these down in here. I've got a special one actually right here. I took one of them and I cut it short and I planed it down a little bit on the surface so I can set that one in here. It goes from about an eighth of an inch to zero in here and that should get us really close. Let's read this now. There we go, 15 and 5 eighths. 
I'm gonna get out of the way of that laser, 15 and 9 16 strong, so it's almost 5 8 so this is working out really well. So we're ready to put those shims down permanently, and I'll put them down with some screws. So I'm just going to screw these pieces down so they don't move around. There we go. And then I'm ready for the next step because I've got the opening now so it's level. And that is so important. So the next step is installing the sill pan, but before I put the sill pan in, I want to put in a cant strip so that any moisture that gets inside of this opening will be directed outside. It'll flow outside. And this is the cant strip I'm using. I made this out of Versatex PVC trim, so it'll never rot. It'll never do anything. And I really don't have to use PVC because I'm going to protect this with a membrane sill pan in just a moment. But the cant strip is really nothing more than a piece of material that's ripped from a half inch to about a quarter or an eighth of an inch, which is what this is. So we got some slope right here. I'm going to put a cant strip into each one of these openings like this, every single one of them, and screw them down, and then I'm going to put a membrane sill pan in here next. And I got a little short one in here for this side light. Great. Now we've got the cant strips in, and the next step is to put in the sill pans. But really, I can't put the sill pan in until I attach the ledger to the wall, because the sill pan is going to come down over the sill and wrap over the wall and cover the ledger, too. This is a peel and stick waterproof membrane, and it can be a major pain in the neck. Once you pull the release paper off the back, if this stuff sticks to itself, you may as well just throw it away because you'll never get it apart. But because it has such good adhesion, it'll stick to the zip wall really well. We're going to use this because it's also self-healing. It's not just a self-adhesive, but it's self-healing. If you put a nail through it, the membrane will heal around the nail, so it makes a really good waterproof membrane behind the ledger. We want to protect the wall, especially where the ledger connection is. So I'm going to take this material, I'm going to unroll a little bit of it, just a little of it, and pull the paper off of it. I'm going to take this adhesive and stick it on the wall. You notice I even put a pencil mark here just to get myself started. So I've got it stuck to the wall there just at the top, and I'm going to unroll this a little ways and pull the paper off the back and stick it to the wall. Just like so. Now I can pull the bottom off and keep this straight. Put some more pressure on there and it'll be easier to keep fairly straight across this wall. All I have to do is pull the paper off and unroll it as I go. And if it creeps up on the wall a little bit, that's okay. It's no problem, but I can also take it and pull it back off because it's a pressure sensitive adhesive. It's not going to really stick until I apply real pressure to it. So I can just pull the paper off the rest of the way. Come right back to the end of this wall. And I'll just cut off the remainder of it. And now, I'll show you how we get this to really stick. This is a J-roller. You may not have seen one of these, except maybe with plastic laminate installers or something, but this is an absolutely critical tool to own whenever you're applying pressure-sensitive adhesives. And I'm going to use this, actually, I got this one from Huber Engineered Woods. They're the folks that make zip wall, and you use one of these to install and apply all the zip tape, too. And I'll be using that in just a minute. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this J-roller and apply pressure onto the adhesive, onto this waterproof membrane, and make sure that it adheres really, really well. All the way across the opening. You can't apply this kind of pressure with your fingertips or the palm of your hand because it's uneven and it's not as intense a pressure and concentrated a pressure as you get with this J-roller.
Well, that'll definitely hold the ledger on, and it's waterproofed real well right behind it. But now, let's make sure we waterproof the top of it. We're going to put a sill pan in here now, and when we put the sill pan in, we'll wrap it right over the top of the ledger. We're not going to pull it down too far, though, because we don't want it to be exposed. When we're all done, after that sill pan, which is made out of an adhesive membrane again, after the sill pan is in and comes over the lip of this ledger, we're going to trim this all off with an aluminum sill nosing, and that'll cover up that little bit of waterproof membrane on the top of the ledger. So. I'm putting little patches of zip tape into each one of these corners first. Some people cut bow ties when they're usually putting it on a flat wall and right on top of the zip wall. But I'm putting mine on top of this ledger too. So instead of using a bow tie, I'm just cutting a little patch here. I'm going to make a little notch in the, in the membrane and then pull the paper off. Just fold it over and then just kind of roll it a little bit in your finger and you can pull the, tape, the paper right off the back comes off pretty easily. Usually you can get it all, <laughs> not end up with a little strip like this. But this stuff is very, very sticky. It's stickier than the asphalt emulsion membrane because the adhesive on the back of the zip tape is an acrylic adhesive. It'll adhere to anything. This is a more expensive adhesive. That's one of the reasons the zip tape is so reliable. I'm gonna take the tape and I'm just gonna set it down right on top of this PVC on top of that little can strip and then I'm going to adhere it to the top of the, of the, of the ledger here. I just wanted to come over the edge of the ledger and back to the house and you can see I'm getting a nice crease right against the house here, tight to the house and right above the ledger and then I'll just stick it to the top of the can strip and to the trimmer here, to the framing on the side, and get a good seal here. I'm going to go over the top of all of this with the actual sill pan itself, and we'll do that right now. Okay, this stuff, like I said before, is really tricky. You want to peel the paper off the back. You can just crinkle this over a little bit. Just bend this corner over, and then roll it a little, and you'll be able to pull the paper off. So pull the paper off very carefully, and then immediately fold it in the middle, just like this. And that way you won't have to worry about it sticking to itself. Put your finger right in the middle of the opening on top of the, of the, of the membrane and kind of set it where you want it and then just let it run. Now I don't like it there. I want it to lip over the face of this ledger a little. So I'm going to pull it up and set it down again. This time I'll put my finger right on top of the ledger so I get like about a half inch or so of overlap and then I'll set it down on the PVC cant strip and let it and lay it down so it's kind of parallel to the opening here. It's sticky, so take your time and get it on there right. There we go. Let me get it off my finger. And I'll work this side right into the corner, just like that. Get it in tight and into those corners. Otherwise, that window won't fit in there. And the same with this one. I'm going to pull it loose for a second and then work it in tight to the corner at the bottom. There's plenty of time to do this as long as you don't push on it. As soon as you apply pressure to it, that's when it really sticks. And then, this time, now the last piece I cut it uh, vertically. This time, I'm going to cut this piece horizontally and I'm going to cut it a little bit high, like right there, and pull this flap around and that way we'll get good adhesion on top of the other piece. This is kind of a shingle style adhesion. So there's good waterproofing all the way across. There's no little pinhole leaks here. I'll do the same thing over here. I'll cut it up a little bit high and then pull this piece down and this piece back over against the wall. And it's this spot down here that we're really trying to protect. This area that usually gets a little pinhole leak right in here. This thing is never going to leak. And it better not, it's my house. I'm gonna put one more layer in here right down here so I'll have a 
complete water seal right to the inside of the wall. Let me stick that there just temporarily. And this one, I'll give some, put some pressure on it and run it up the wall here so it sticks really good. And make sure it's into that corner real tight. Same with this one. I want to roll this into the corner, get my fingers in there, and then press it against the wall. Just like so. Perfect. To finalize it, make sure this stuff is really going to adhere. I'm going to roll every single one of these pieces. This is the sill nosing. I've notched it out so it slips in right into the rough opening and sits on top of the sill. And now I can set this down and I can even drive a couple of small screws in here to hold it in place. Then run my bead of sealant back in here and set my units on top of it. And that way the threshold of the window and the door that I'm going to set will sit right on top of this aluminum sill nosing and it'll dress up this whole edge. I've even allowed enough room here on the ear for the trim to come down and terminate right against the horn on that nosing. You can get these nosings from almost any lumber yard, any good lumber yard or hardware store. So we got the seal nosings in, and before I put any sealant down on those seals, I'm going to put a nice big bead of sealant on there before I permanently install these doors. I wanted to dry fit them first. I always do that, just to make sure everything fits and everything's going to be copacetic. Now I can pull this out and I'll run that sealant. I'm using OSI's Tech Seal here. It's an awesome product for sealing sills or sealing nailing fins up against the wall. And actually, that's exactly what I'm going to be using behind the nailing fins on these windows. You want to make sure that you use a sealant, not a caulk, not an adhesive, when you're installing windows and doors. This is a requirement. It's a code requirement. This is a requirement by AMA and all of the uh, window fenestration manufacturers. You have to use a sealant because it has maximum flexibility. A caulking or an adhesive crystallizes is when it dries and it, it can't flex and handle changes in moisture content or wood movement or the movement between dissimilar materials. Not like Texiel can. Great. Now I'm ready to set these units permanently.